Glory to God. Well, welcome to our service this morning. As, as uh, I'm going to be teaching on something. I, I kind of thought about this. I haven't taught on this stuff for a long time, but sometimes we need a refresher course. Today I'm going to be talking about exposing demons. You know, we, you know, we got, there are demons in this world all over. Think about wherever Jesus went. What did he do? He healed the sick and he cast out devils. So they were very, you know, very uh, well, it was very well known in that time that there was demons everywhere. So do we think there's any less today? You know, demons don't die. They're, they're eternal beings. When they're cast out of, some, of somebody or something, they just go looking for somebody else to possess and, and, and trouble and hurt. And, you know, in our Christian walk, we have to understand that we really have two uh, enemies, two things that we fight. Number one is we fight our flesh. Your flesh is something that, you see, the Bible says over in Romans chapter 7 that Paul says, in me dwells no good thing. There, there is a nature of, of sin in our flesh. And that's not going away. That's why we have to die. We have to die and go back. That's why we have to have resurrected or glorified bodies because that sin has to be dealt with. You can't go to heaven with the body you have because it has sin in it. So we have to get rid of the sin. We have to be recreated, given glorified bodies, and then we can dwell. But your body, ha your body is one of the worst things that, that, that you fight. And your body has, has cravings, your body has desires, and your body is, you know, want, it just wants to pleasure itself. It only wants things to make me feel good. That's what, that's what the body's all about. But we have an intermediate in there called the soul or the mind. Now, and between the, excuse me, between the flesh and the spirit. Now, your spirit, man, is, has been recreated in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. Jesus told Nicodemus, unless one is born again, you have to be born of the spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit, you become a new being in your spirit. You are wall to wall Holy Spirit. You are the temple of God. Now there's no evil there, but the evil lies in the flesh. But then you have your mind, which is in between. And your mind gets to choose which way you're going to go. Now if you're, if you're built up in a spirit, the mind is going to choose the spirit. But if all you're thinking about, if your body is in control, and all you're thinking about is the lust of the flesh, the pride of the eyes, then you're going to go in the, in the way of the flesh. But there's also another enemy in this world, and it's called Satan. He's called Satan. He has demons. He has devils. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians chapter 6, he gives, a, he gives us you know, an example of it. He says there are principalities. There are powers. There are rulers of darkness of this age. There are spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. And we see throughout Jesus' ministry, he dealt with deaf spirits, dumb spirits, unclean spirits, spirits of infirmity. There are all kinds of different demons Jesus dealt with. So we have to make sure in this, in this day and age that we don't sweep that devil under the carpet, as a lot of people just don't believe in the devil. They just believe that's just, you know, he's just some, it's just the, the force of evil. Well, I, I tell you what, I heard the force of evil speak. I seen the I seen devils speak out of people. I seen devils manifest in people. I seen people thrown to the floor, and and the devil would just would just have them go into fits on the floor. You know, I I seen the works of the devil. You know, you, you see things that are happening. So he is very real, and so we must we must understand that that we have to deal with him. And sometimes, you know, when we don't hear these kind of sermons, we get kind of lackadaisical about it. And a lot of things that happen in our life, we just, we just account them to, well, that's just the way it is, or that's how the world is. No, there's a devil out there, and he's, he's going about to devour whoever he can. He's come, the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, to steal, kill, and destroy. 
So it's easy to find out who he is, but we got to understand that we have to walk in the spirit to discern these things. So today I'm going to discuss uh, this area that we, we need to conquer. I mean, we just need to learn about him. See, the devil already is defeated. Jesus defeated him at the cross. The Bible says in, that, that he disarmed principalities and powers. And so he is defeated, and he goes about like a roaring lion. He isn't a roaring lion. He pretends to be, and he, he's really good at it. He's a, he's a deceiver. And the Bible tells us that we need to watch out for his wiles, for his tricks. So we, we need to uh, understand who we are in Christ and that we have certain rights that Satan has no power over. Amen? Amen. Let's start off in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. First of all, we want to find out, you know, uh, do we really have these rights? What does the Bible say about it? In Luke chapter 10, verse number 17, it says, Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. First thing we need to know, that th these are not, a lot of people keep, uh, they keep saying that this power was for the apostles. But no, this is for everybody. We're talking, and as a matter of fact, he says this is the seventy. These were seventy other people who were just following Jesus. <coughs> And Jesus gave, gave them power over demons, over sickness, and over disease. And they came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. So apparently, they went out and cast devils out of people. They cast the devils out of people. They healed the sick. But you notice the key here is in Jesus' name. You have no power in yourself to defeat the devil. You, 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 you know, you're, you're, and actually you're, in your humanity, you're on kind of a, an even plane with the devil. Actually, I, I, and even somebody who is not born again actually has more power than the devil. They just don't know it. Because there are people in the world, I mean, if the devil could possess everybody, wouldn't you think he would? You know, he, he can't. He tries. He does everything he can to get in people. But there are people who have power over him. Actually, Satan really has no power. He gets his power from people. Satan uh, can't destroy or, or, or can't destroy this earth. Uh, the Antichrist is going to be a human being possessed by the devil. Satan himself can't do anything. He has to use men. Because man has been given dominion in the earth. You have dominion in the earth even before you were born again. But once you got born again, now the Bible says you are far above all principalities and powers. Now because of the blood of Jesus. Now because you are in Christ. See, if you're in Christ, Satan has nothing in you. But if we're ignorant of his devices, he has a way to get into your flesh and into your mind. And even Christians can be, um, can be influenced by evil spirits. Verse number 18 says, And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus said, I witnessed his defeat. I was there when we cast him out of heaven. Verse 18, he says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. So this is something we ought to rejoice in. Behold, I give you authority. That means you already got it. He's given it to you. You have authority. This word authority means that you have Jesus backing you up. You, he, he is behind. If you say something, he will back it up. If you rebuke the devil, he will back it up. This is what he's telling us. I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. <clears throat> um, so he grants us or offers to us this authority, but we have to take it. 
Remember it says in, in Mark chapter 16, these signs will follow those that believe in my name, they will cast out devils. What does it take to cast out the devil? You've got to believe that you can do it. If you don't believe you have the power, you won't do nothing. You know, if you, if you don't believe you can, you can uh, compete in the Olympics, you won't go try out. If you, don't believe, if you don't believe you can do something, you won't do it. But if you believe that Jesus told you, I've given you authority, you have no problem tackling the devil. You have no problem casting it out, casting him out. So he grants us that authority over all, I like that word, all the power. Now this word power is the, is the Greek word dunamis, it's miraculous power. The devil has, has the ability to do lying signs and wonders. He does things that really look like they're miraculous, like they're God. You know, there are churches all over this world, or religions all over this world, who base their religion on something that they've seen happen. Like, there's a big religion that, that bases itself on an angel that came and spoke to a man. Now that angel wasn't God, that angel was a demonic spirit. And there was, there's, there's an angel, there's a couple of them out there, you know, there's one called Mormon. And there was an angel that came to a, a man named, I believe his name was John Smith, and he gave him the Book of Mormon. Well, that's a demonic, you know, that's a demonic book. Joseph, that, Joseph, Smith. Joseph Smith, there you go. Joseph Smith, and that's a demonic book. That's because it takes away from the gospel of Jesus. And so there are, you know, even some of the religions that we, we know of, uh, they, they've had, you know, something appear, like a Mary appears with blood on her hands, and they think this is of God. That's a demon spirit trying to distract things away from Jesus. You know, everything's about Jesus. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Nobody else gets any glory. You don't get glory. I don't get glory. No other uh, person gets glory. It's Jesus, period. Amen? Amen. Jesus only. And so uh, these spirits, these demons come and they, they bring, them, or bring with them lying signs and wonders. But Jesus said we have power over all the power of the enemy, over all demons, over all devils. You have power over Satan himself. You remember the story? I, I don't know. It was, I, I heard it of both people, Smith Wigglesworth and Lester Summerall, <clears throat> when they were in... Um, in, in some country, they were out preaching the word of God and they were sleeping in their room. They heard a noise. They woke up and they looked at the end of the bed and there was Satan himself come to try to stop them. And they woke up and they, they knew who they were in Christ. They got up and looked at it and seen Satan and said, and he said, oh, it's only you. And rolled back and went to sleep. <laughs> See, really, in reality, it, He's a defeated foe. He has no power. He makes himself like a roaring lion. You know, he can make himself look like something, but, you know, fear not. <clears throat> I was telling Peter earlier about, I, God shows me things in the natural, that I see in the natural, to show me uh, spiritual things. Did you ever see that? You ever watching? I like to watch outdoor shows. And I was watching this show the other day. This guy was in Africa. He was leading a, a guiding a tour. And he was standing out in the middle of this road. And this big bull elephant. I mean, this big this elephant was huge. And it was snorting. His ears were out. And he came at a full charge at this guy. And the guy just stood there. The elephant got, you know, 10 feet from him and put the brakes on. And went away. See, that's how the Satan is. He'll come at you roaring like that big elephant or roaring like a lion. But if you stand your ground, when the Bible says, when you've done all to stand, stand, stand. When you stand your ground, he will stop. He, will, he, he can't do anything. How could he do anything to you? We just read when Jesus said, nothing by any means shall harm you. Amen. He may sound ferocious. It may sound for whatever he's bringing to steal, kill, and destroy might sound ferocious, but if we stand our ground, he has no power 
no power to do anything to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it says, not one thing shall be able to harm you if you come in the name of Jesus in faith. You know who you are. You believe who you are. Verse 20 says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In other words, don't dwell on the devil. He's already defeated. Amen. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Keep your eyes on, on heaven. Your salvation is way more important than dwelling on devils. You know, years ago, the, the, you know, there was many ministries that got into deliverance. And it was all about casting devils out of people. I mean, they, they, were, they were casting devils out of people continually. And, and a lot of it was, was just really was human manifestations. And people were just, you know, um, they got caught up in it. And this is what he's telling us. Don't rejoice in this. When the devil comes, just get him away. Okay, you know, coming up in about another few weeks or a month, there's going to be these little things that are going to come out, and they're called mosquitoes. So if you're standing out in your yard, and a mosquito lands on your arm, what are you going to do to him? Are you going to go, ah, ah, what are we going to do? You just go, and it's done. Think of that when you deal with the devil. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll do what? Flee. flee. He'll flee. And I remember studying this out and it says, he'll flee as if in terror. He is deathly afraid of you. If you come in the name of Jesus, he is fearful of you. Even that mosquito, if he lands on your arm and you go to put your hand by him, what does he do? He flies away right away. See, that's how the devil, as soon as you begin to uh, apply faith, he has no choice but to leave. So meditate more on heaven. Meditate more on Jesus. Don't think about devils and demons. They're, they're there. You know, just like when you go to bed this summer, there are thousands and millions of mosquitoes outside buzzing around. But you got your screens on, you got your doors closed, you don't fall asleep in terror of the mosquitoes. You know, you just go to sleep. Oh, they're out there. In the same way, there's devils out there. But don't fear them. Amen. You are under the shadow of the Almighty. No evil shall befall you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. <clears throat> but he's always there. You've got to be aware of him, though. You know, just, just think, I don't know why I'm dwelling on mosquitoes today, but, <laughs> you know, I'm going to give you a clue. Start praying right now. The Bible says in Psalm 91, you've been delivered from the perilous pestilence. Start praying right now. Rebuke them, bugs, from coming in your house, from being in your yard. I sit out in my yard all the time. I don't have mosquitoes at my house. I mean, I got one or two every once in a while, but that's it. That's too, too many, but... They don't come by my house. I rebuke them. I pray over my land. It's my land. I plead the blood over my land. I am delivered from the perilous pestilence. No pests are allowed. And I can sit out on my deck in the morning and drink my coffee without having on three pairs of pants and a t-shirt and, and a net. I can sit out there in my shorts and drink a cup of coffee and enjoy it. But start doing it. Start praying. Use your power. You've been delivered from pests. Amen? Amen. But Satan is out there lurking. In the same way, use your prayers to keep him away. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps about those who fear God. Do you fear God? Amen. Then you have angels encamped around your house. Now if they're out there encamped around it, there ain't no devils coming through. Because they got, they got God's power with them. So I just I go to sleep at night perfectly at peace because I have angels encamped all around my house. Amen. Amen. So they are my screens on my doors. They are the ones who are protecting me and, and helping me. But you got to be wise because the devil is cunning. He's scheming. 
But if we continue walking in the Spirit, we, He can never defeat us. Amen? Amen. So, how do we stay ready at all times? You got to be ready. Let's go look in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. How do we stay ready at all times? You have to, you have to be ready because the enemy is always out there. He's lurking around. He's trying to get in. He's looking for any little hole to get in. And we just gotta, we just gotta be ready for him. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in verse number 4, it says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. He who speaks in a tongue edifies, this word edify means builds up, build up. Like it says in the book of Jude, Jude verse 20, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You, do, you pray in tongues. I mean, I mean, pray in tongues every time you think about it. Every chance you have. Every time you're doing that, you're charging up, you're building up your spirit, man. So if you do encounter a devil, a demon, you have power in you, your faith is built up, that you can cast him out. So build yourself up. Be ready at all times. If you're in the spirit, you are loaded continually. And he'll have no, no way to get into your life. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. This is a story about a man who brought a, a, a child to, G, to uh, the disciples and and this, this young boy was demon-possessed, and the disciples couldn't cast out the devil. In verse number 19, they asked Jesus. They, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast him out? Why couldn't we cast that devil out? You gave us power. Why, don't, why couldn't we do it? Verse 20, Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here and it will be moved, and nothing will be impossible to you. So Jesus said the reason they couldn't do it is because they didn't really believe they could do it. Sometimes what happens is, and you see this, this happened with Jesus, when he met a, a young boy who had, who had a, an epileptic spirit, and the, the devil threw this boy on the ground and he was, he was uh, shaking and the Bible says he was foaming at the mouth. And if you ever seen somebody who has, who has an epileptic fit or has you know, a seizure and you see somebody do that, it's, it's kind of unnerving. When you see somebody laying there shaking and flopping and you know, it's kind of like, ah, what do I do? But see, that is the deception. The devil is trying to scare you so that you don't, you don't cast him out. He wants, to, wants you to, to be afraid of him. So apparently, that's what happened with these guys. They seen this boy flopping around, and, and they were fearful rather than operating in faith. So Jesus told them, the reason you couldn't cast that devil out is because you didn't really believe you could. Because of your little faith, your unbelief. Now verse 21, Jesus says, However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This kind, what kind? Not, he's not talking about the devil. This kind of unbelief. This kind of unbelief. It's all about, it's, it's the, the same word in Jesus' name comes out, or come out of that person. Works every time. Every time. But it's not that one demon is more powerful than another demon as far as casting them out. It's do we believe we can do it? You know, do you, do you believe you can kill that mosquito? Of course you can. Well, what if it was, what if it was uh, 
one of them called a murder hornet, hornet landed on your arm. See, I'm telling you, the same way, if a murder hornet landed on your arm and you slapped them, you would kill them the same as you did the mosquito. But chances are, if he did, you would freak out and start running. But you could kill him the same way. Right? I mean, a slap from a human being on a, on a hornet is, is deadly to the hornet. But because we believe that that thing is going to bite us or hurt us or kill us, people will run away from it. See, that's what the devil's trying to do. The devil is trying to trick people think, to think that they don't have the power. So Jesus said, if you are built up in prayer and fasting, you are walking in the Spirit, you are built up in, in, in the power of the Holy Spirit, then you will have no, no problem at all casting out the devil. This kind of unbelief is dealt with prayer and fasting. So sometimes you just got to get into some times of fasting, getting away from food, getting away from, from you know, your normal eating habits. If you're dealing with something, sometimes the only way you're going to get victory over it is through prayer and fasting. That is true. So you have to you have to do, there's three things you can do. You pray, you fast, you pray in tongues. I'm telling you, you'll have zero problem with the devil. Because whenever he shows up, you'll just say, get out of here in Jesus' name. And he will have to flee. He has no choice. We don't have, we don't have to put up with his antics. <clears throat> so, how do you recognize when, it's, when there is a demon in operation? There are things we've got to differentiate between the spirit and, and the natural, th natural things that happen. Now I found out a good way, a good way to find out if there's a, debil, a demon. If it doesn't make sense, it's probably a demon. If what's going on and you're saying, just, as th just does not make sense. You better start looking into a spirit realm, spirit realm. There is something behind what is going on. Does it make sense that the, the world, 8 billion people are locked down because of a virus that has killed less people than the flu? No, no don't make sense. Does it make sense that, that 50, 75 percent of, of America is walking around with masks on? There is something behind it. And we dealt with that way back last year, and it's called the spirit of fear. See, if you get rid of the spirit of fear, he has nothing in you. So when things are happening that it doesn't make sense, chances are there's demonic influence behind it. So start dealing with the devil, not just dealing with people, not just dealing with normal circumstances, Think about it. This, you know, when you say this, because I know you've done this, you went, this doesn't make any sense. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? There's something going on in the spirit realm that we must be aware of. You know, I've, I've watched programs on, on you know, TV and on, on the news where a guy would, would murder his children. And he, would say, and he would say, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I did it. I don't know why I did it. Well, <laughs> chances are behind it he was fooling around with the occult or something and he got, he got a demon that operated in his life to do this. You know, when I was a, a young man, I, I got caught up in, uh, in alcohol and when, I was <clears throat> when I was real young and I became an alcoholic and I was an alcoholic for like 20 years. Jesus delivered me from alcoholism. When I was 31 years old, I, I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with Jesus. And I prayed a simple prayer. And I, asked, I told Jesus, according to Matthew 11:28, 28, I said, Jesus, I can't do this. You said, come unto me, all you who are, who are heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I said, Jesus, I can't do this. You got to take this away from me. 
Now, I struggled for years trying to quit drinking. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the willpower to do it. So he, he instantly delivered me from alcohol. Now, one thing that was strange about my deliverance from alcohol is I had no uh, detox. I had no problems. I had no, no uh, um, you know, people, people get their bodies after drinking for so much. They, they go into shock. They, I had none of that. It's, it was gone. It was over and done with completely. Years later, I was praying. And I was, you know, somehow why I was praying, but I, and I was just praying, and I, and I was thinking about my life, and I just asked the Lord, you know, why did I get delivered like that, and so many people struggle with, with it? And he told me, he brought me back to a time I was 13 years old, and I was, I was drinking at 13 years old. Can you imagine that? Should have slapped, I should have slapped myself. <laughs> but 13 years old, and... <clears throat> I was at a party, and a friend of mine said, said uh, Tom, you need to get going, you know, it's 11.30 and you're supposed to be home at midnight. And I cursed my father, because I didn't like his rules. And I wanted to drink, I said, I ain't going, you know, I won't say what I said, but I ain't going, but, but I'm having a good time, I'm going to stay. And, and I cursed my father. And God showed me when I did that, I opened the door for a spirit of alcohol to come into my life. That's what drove me for 20 years. And so when, when Jesus cast that demon of alcohol out of me, that's why I didn't have, I, I wasn't addicted physically, it was a spirit. When the spirit was gone, I had no desire to drink anymore. It all left. See, there was something behind. There was an alien entity that had gotten into my body, into my mind, and my, my flesh was, was just, uh, had desired this, this alcohol, but that spirit, when it was gone, I had no desire. And that's, that's been 40 years ago. And I haven't even, I have, I have no thoughts, <laughs> no desires whatsoever ab about ever drinking again. So let's go over to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. We want to make sure that, that uh, you know, no, no evil befalls us, no devils uh, have a right in our life, and, and uh, we and, like, keep them out. So, <clears throat> what attracts these things, what, what, what brings these on is, is one of them is fear. You know, fear, um, fear is actually the opposite of faith. And God says over and over in the Bible, fear not. He's trying to tell us, don't fall for that. Second Timothy uh, tells us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Well, here in James chapter uh, 3, I'm going to start in verse 13. He says, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct <clears throat> that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So in other words, if, if you want to be wise and you want to be an understanding person, do good things. You know what's good, you know what's bad. Do good things, he said. Verse 14, but, say but. But. If you have bitter envy and self-speaking in your hearts, do not boast against against. Uh, the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. So if, if any of these attributes, bitterness, envy, self-seeking, or selfishness, negative emotions, the Bible says, if they're let to go unchecked, they're, gonna, they're going to attract demons. Verse 16, for where envy and self-seeking are, confusion and every evil thing will be there. Just think about that for a second. If you are, if you are envious, if you're bitter, if you're in unforgiveness, if you hate people, if you argue with people, if you fight with people, you are just drawing demonic forces towards you. You are, you are, you are just drawing things to you. You know, it's just like, like if, you, if you go out and, 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 and put uh, food out in your yard and you put uh, bird seed out in your yard, the birds are going to come. 
I don't know how they find them, but they do. Sometimes I go out in my yard and I'll throw something out there in the yard, and now there's nothing around. And I'll, an hour later, I'll look outside, there's all kinds of birds and blue jays and crows and squirrels and chipmunks. Somehow they find it. They just find it. They have, they have this uncanny way of finding it. Well, if, if you allow these emotions to go unchecked in your life, the Bible says that there is going to be confusion, and that confusion, remember I said earlier about, <clears throat> about when, you, when you don't understand, why is this happening? Why are these things happening to me? How can this be? You're confused, right? Check up in your life, have you been arguing with somebody? Have you been fighting with somebody? Are you bitter about something? Are you envious about something? Are you all about you, selfishness? These are the things that attract devils. These are the things. And you notice it says that there's going to be every evil thing. Every evil thing. All kinds of evil things could happen. We're talking about sickness could happen, disease could happen, death could happen. You know, he could steal your, your money, your finances, all the things that are wrong that God's trying to bless you with. And so watch these things. Don't let your emotions run away with you. Don't let your emotions get the upper hand. If you will walk in love, forgiveness, joy, it'll be like putting on demon repellent. They're not going to come around you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love people. I love what you give me, Lord. If, you, if somebody's hurt me, I forgive them, Lord. You know, be ready. That, that was a good one. Be ready. Anytime anybody does anything, forgive them immediately. Amen. Don't dwell on it. Why did they do this? Never mind why they did it. They were probably being influenced by a devil. Never mind. Just forgive them. Our fight is not with flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. It's with principalities and powers. <clears throat> so, just put on this demon repellent called love, joy, forgiveness, peace. Be happy. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Let the word of God dwell in you, the Bible says, richly. This is the repellent that keeps de devils away. They don't like to come around goodness. They don't like to come around people who are loving and kind and, and who forgive. They won't have nothing to do with you. So when something comes at you and you don't understand what it is, stop whatever you're doing and pray. And say, Father, what's going on here? Would you show me where, what, what I'm dealing with? Show me what, what, I, what I need to do. And don't go after people. You know, don't, don't just cast the devil out. I mean, it, it, and I'm telling you, there are more types of demons out there than, than as they say, you could shake a stick at. I don't know wherever that came from. It means there's a lot of them anyway. I mean, there, there's demons of fear, of hate, of deafness, dumbness. Uh, I know there's a spirit of alcohol because I dealt with him. There's a spirit of infirmity which causes sickness. Cast out that spirit of infirmity. Don't take sickness in your life. You know, if you tried everything, you know, how about this woman who went, uh, went to all the doctors in the Bible and she, she did everything and she went to all the doctors and, and she didn't get any better. The Bible says she grew worse. And then when Jesus came, Jesus healed her, cast out a spirit of infirmity, she was well. Maybe something that's been bugging you for many years is a spirit. It's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. Just command the spirit, get out of my body. Get out of my body. Get away from me. You know, I'm telling you, the devil comes. He'll, he'll throw them fiery darts. Thank God we, we have uh, 
Ephesians chapter 6, thank God we have the, the armor of God, and one of them is the shield of faith, wherewith we can quench all the fire, I like all, there it is again, all the fiery darts of the evil one. He'll throw them darts. He'll throw them darts at us. But we say, no, in Jesus' name, I will not allow that in my life. Get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. Very simple. But we got to keep on it. Be on your toes. The devil doesn't sleep or he doesn't slumber. He's always out there. He's waiting for an opportune moment. Just like them mosquitoes. You'll see them on your screen door. Waiting for you to open that door a little bit. They'll come in. And if they get in your house, guess what, guess what happens at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> they begin to torment you, right? <laughs> That's how the devil is. He's just like that. He comes in to torment you. Close the door on him. Don't let him in. Build that bubble around you, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying and fasting, reading your word, being in God's presence. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High where no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. You have been delivered from the perilous pestilence. Actually, Psalm 91 says you're going to tread upon the lion and the cobra. Where, where does Satan belong? We, we, we sang that song this morning. He's under my feet. Amen? Amen? That's the only place he can be is under our feet. That's not literally under your feet. That means he's way beneath you. I don't even want him touching my toes. Amen. Amen? That means he's way beneath me. He, he, he can't touch me. Jesus said this, that, that the prince of the world comes, but he has nothing in me. That's how I want to be. Same way. Satan is there, but he has nothing in me. Why? I am, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a son of God. I have been, I have been sanctified and I'm set apart and Satan, I, I don't even live in his world. Colossians says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. I don't live in that world anymore. Satan's in darkness and I'm in light. Amen? Amen. So we, we, we have to, don't let that deceiver get in. Deal with demons. Get you, prepare yourself, and when he comes, just cast them out. Amen? Get out of my life, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is so good, it reveals to us who we are in Christ Jesus and the power that we have. We have power over all serpents and all scorpions, and nothing by any means can harm us. So, Father, I pray. I pray for those watching today. Some of you don't, have never heard anything like this. And maybe you, you haven't thought about it in a while. But if you're being troubled by demons or devils or, or sickness or disease, listen to my words. In the name of Jesus, I command every evil spirit to go from your body, from your home, from your family, from your children, in the name of Jesus. Now just believe it and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you again next week right here at the Lighthouse.